The Cleveland Way is a national trail in the historic area of Cleveland in North Yorkshire. It runs 110 miles between Helmsley and the Brig at Filey, skirting the North York Moors National Park. There's background noises and everything, but let's not worry about that for now. Where'd I wake up? Right, let's do it. So this was the hottest day ever. <laughs> I woke up here in this field and we headed in to Oz Motherly, where there is a toilet where I filled up my water and brushed my teeth and stuff. So that's a joy. Got some food um, from the little shop on here and then headed off, bumped into the a guy that became my saviour in the future, stay tuned to find out more about that. He was going this way, I had no idea I'd see him again. And that he would play such a pivotal role in this journey. And off I went, up, onto the tops, some lovely views from out here. Um, really enjoyed hiking this bit and through these woodlands, which uh, afforded me a little bit of shade. And then dropping down here, you realised how hot it was when I dropped down off the top. So it was like, oh my, it is actually boiling and my skin is hot. Anyway, bat on, I can't really remember because it was a bit ago, but up on the tops again, along here. I'm up on the tops now, it was windy, but it was like a hot wind. And it was kind of giving me a false sense of the actual temperature. So when I dropped down here, I was like, oh my word. Uh, this is where I fill my water bottle up and try to get my head down behind some trees, but just wasn't having any of it. Kept getting eaten by horseflies and that. <laughs> these, this is where it killed me off, man. These, these, uh, these valleys here killed me off. You see elevation on it. Killed me off. Absolutely. But I got my views out from here that I was denied on the coast to coast, which made up for it. On I go. Ed started to go about here, I think. <laughs> See that exclamation mark? That is my head popping. Up here for another climb up. Uh, yeah, this is where Ed popped actually. Climbed up here. Ed popped around here. Hid somewhere around here. That's where I was like, oh, I'm going to camp here. That's where I bumped into that guy from Harrogate. And he gave me a little bottle of water, which really did help. So that gave me beans to pop to, to keep going. Up here, this is where my puddle was about here. Kept going, and then I came out on here, and I think this is where I camped, if I'm not mistaken, maybe. Which, which uh, I got a wonderful sunset. Uh, and that's where it is. That's where we are. We camped on here. Somewhere along here is where I camped. And uh, that was it, mate. That was the arguably the toughest day's hiking of my life. Welcome to day three on the Cleveland Way. <laughs> and let me tell you, well, first of all, look at this. Beautiful pitch, beautiful views. I got such a stunning sunset last night. It was an absolute joy. Um, I took away from the fact that I had sunstroke. I think I've still got a bit of sunstroke because of the heat of yesterday and the day before, especially yesterday in the 40 degree and it was relentless so Ed's been hurting a little bit and I felt sick I thought I was going to be sick I was retching out at tent last night bit dizzy but I, I feel okay so I ran out of water because I was feeling sick I've drank my water so that's the first part of call is just keep hiking till we find summer even a puddle whatever get some water down us um, I didn't get as far as I'd planned in my head but that's life. It turned out to be quite a hard hike. The Cleveland Way is no joke. Yesterday was the hardest hiking I've done in a long time because of the sun. But it wasn't just like flat, it was like that. Up and down, almost vertical at points, up and down. So, a tough one on the old legs. And with the heat, it was just relentless. I forgot everything I said yesterday, but if you're watching, there was a guy probably the only guy I've seen on the trail or on any trail and uh, he gave me some of his water and he was on his way he was doing the coast to coast he was on his way to um, Blakey Ridge so he's from Harrogate I forget your name mate but thanks very much I really appreciate it but all in all it's all good man um, the chafing hurts at, like considering it's day three 
I don't know. I'm just going to keep going anyway. It's, it, it is what we do, isn't it? We just smash it out. Is that toxic to say that? I don't know. Yesterday, I was like, there was bits in my mind yesterday were like, oh my God, I'm going to have to tap out. I'm going to have to tap out. I don't know what to do. There was no shelter. I, there was, there's nothing. There's no way to get out of the sun. It was... It was worrying at times. I was like, right, I can't get out of the sun. My water rations are very low. Phone's running out of battery. Like, <laughs> am I going to have to be medic out? Medic! I thought that was going to... The human medic, I thought. I've cut back. I'm, I'm, I'm going to maybe add an extra day onto this whole hike. Because it's taken me a bit longer to do these first two days in this heat wave. I don't think... I don't know if I mentioned there was a heat wave. So my plan is to get to uh, Saltburn by the sea uh, and uh, get my first look at the big blue. That will be good. And instead of wild camping there, if I get the opportunity, or if there is anywhere, I'm going to stay in some digs just to get a shower, rest myself properly. I was always going to do that anyway. I'll just wild camp, who cares? I've got, I've got rehydrated meals as long as I get some water. And that's what I'm going to do now. Pack this up and get going. Leave no trace, E Chapman, and we're off. I've blister padded up my toe, or my front of my foot where blister was, and I've tended to my the um, what do you call it chafing um, as best I could, just antiseptic wipes, just keep it clean in it because it was bleeding. Where it's where I'd have, I swear I'd had my junk in this. Uh, Oh, I'll maybe put it on screen now, these Saks underpants, which are good. I might just not be built for them because it's one nut, I don't know. But it just set off a, a chafing that yesterday I couldn't. <laughs> it just got out of hand. It really hurting. It drew blood, so I've cleaned that up. Antiseptic, which I can feel it, it hurts, but as long as it doesn't get infected or out and turn me junk into roadkill. I'll be reaped and foot feels all right, junk feels all right, and side at nuts and thigh feel all right. <laughs> Brain scrambled egg. Brain feels like scrambled egg. Shouldn't laugh, it's not even funny, is it? I'm only laughing because it's ridiculous, and it's what I do when things get a bit, a bit tough sometimes. You have to have a little giggle, don't you? I really want to brush my teeth as well, so. All this comes with getting some water, rehydrate, brush my teeth. Now this is a good day. The sun isn't out, it's sort of behind these. There's a sort of haziness to it. Uh, look at that. I want to say meadow pipit, or some sort of pipit, but... I didn't, nah. It. <laughs> but yeah look so the temperature has noticeably dropped you can feel it, the coolness on my skin which really took it took a pounding in the sun yesterday 50 shades of burnt all in all good stuff man good stuff feel a lot more positive today than I did at the end of yesterday <laughs> Good to be alive on this silly little rock in the middle of an endless universe. <laughs> right, put you away. I'll get some miles done and try and find some water. Day three. Easy, light work. Easy work. <laughs> there we go. It doesn't look like there's going to be any chance of water up here. There just isn't any. So, <laughs> lol. So, Kildale, that's where it'll be because there's a, I think there's a tea room, whether it's open or not, I don't know. And there's some public toilets as well. And I'll drink out at the toilet if I have to, mate. <laughs> you know? 
start to feel like why you know them films like Waterworld and stuff. Not Waterworld. You know when like water becomes currency and you do out for it. That's what I feel. Still cooked from from last two days. And I was having dreams of it. I was having dreams that I was swimming. I was like jumping into this water and just swimming in it and drinking it. And I guess that's why you see like mirages and I've seen a few of them. They're all the same and I'm guessing it's grouse related and I'm guessing it's to catch the rain. And that's why I had a look in it. I'll take the grouse's juice for sure. But the positive, like, it's downhill. It seems like. It seems downhill. I don't know if you can make out on here, but there's a a monument. There, can you see it? There. Captain Cook's monument. We're heading towards that. Around there. Two miles till I get a drink. Exciting times. We've got, we're hitting some road here, so it's not my favorite surface to walk on, but it's, it can be pretty fast. Oof. And however demoralizing it is to look at your, uh, how far you've got to go in one direction. If you look back and you see how far you've come, that puts a spring in your step. Let's put this in our rear view mirror. Blister hurts a little bit and chafing a little bit, but all in all, skipping. Let's chew this up. I'll see you in Kildale, unless something mad or trad happens. It's all good, this road's pretty cool as well. There's nothing on it, there's no one about. It's like the end days, the pocket. Is everyone all right? Imagine that, if heat waves just knocked, wiped everyone out except me. And this is it. <laughs> Still filming, think, to go out to who? I have a guess, just to me, I'll watch it when I'm older. Just me on my sod. Liking, sharing, subscribing. <laughs> Medic! Just seen a pair of lap wings. I wish I had a better zoom. There's two. Oh, curse. There they are, look. Lads, lads, lads. Oh, a lad and a lass, probably. Oh, there's another one, look. There he is. Senor Lapwing. Do a bit. See us later, as medic. Medic. <sighs> Gotta be nearly there now. I don't know if I've ever been this thirsty in my life. Here we go, Cleveland Way. This way, look. Pretty. Yes. Get me in there. And in there. Please, please, please. Yes. No. Oh, it's one of these tight ones. Can't get my bottle in it. Oh well, I brush my teeth and do what I can. Is that the cafe? <laughs> Is that the cafe? Because I can't find it. This is it. Just find myself a little plot for when I can't get any water. Um, 
the water at the toilet was one of them spray out things and it just wasn't working for my bottle and I got a bit of my hand tasting it tasted weird it's like chemicals like it, I think it's just for washing your hands so I've put some in my bottle I'll filter it and boil it and drink it if needs be but I don't know big old church look so I'm getting sidetracked sorry got any water got any taps Big old yew trees. Poisonous. Poisonous to humans, the old yew, and animals. Some of the oldest trees in the UK are yew. And you'll find them in graveyards. A lot of the time. Uh, I believe, there's a few different re uh, rumours going around as to why, but rumours. Thoughts, but... I was always told that because they're poisonous, they planted them on the the grave plots to keep the animals out, the livestock, from uh, mucking about on graves and that. Anyway, nice little church that. Bit of a detour, but sometimes you have to just walk around a church, a graveyard, don't you? Puts things into perspective, mate. Because <laughs> we're all ending up there. That's for sure. Medic! So I just asked a woman and she said that the cafe has been closed for three years, so Harvey Maps, sort it out. <laughs> People put all the eggs in that basket and then when they can't get it... Uh, which, that was a bit of a downer because I was wanting a coffee and cake and all that would have been... and some fresh water. That's a downer, but on the plus side, I saw some dude cleaning his car and I was like, mate, please can I... Uh, Steal some of that, that water out your hose pipe and yeah, he filled my bottles up, so. Ah, got fresh water, <clears throat> forget the cafe, and we're off again. Apparently there's a big hill to deal with on this road, so we're gonna crack on with that and get back up on top. Medic! Nice track this, nice track for walking, but oh that hill out of Kildale. Tarmac as well. Tiring. Is that some raspberries? <laughs> One. <laughs> One raspberry, oh, that's nice mouth feel though, nice taste. Eagle eye cherry. I might stop and have a soup. That's one of my things is a soup I've got. So then we'll get to Captain Cook Monument and have a soup. Celebrate getting to a monument with a soup. Might be the first time I've ever done that. And I'm here for it. beyond caring. Do you remember? We're over there. And I zoomed in on this and here we are. Medi. 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 Shout out Bobby. Bobby. Captain James Cook. Question marks. Question marks about your captain. Ready for a soup. There's Rosebury Topping. That's a detour to go on top of there. I've been to the top of there before, so I'm not going to do it. I want to save my legs and want to bat on. We're making up for lost time, so we're going to try and get to the sea. I'm having a rest. It's approaching midday. I haven't had any calories today or salt or anything. I'm just going to stop and have a soup. I'm have, have chicken soup. <laughs> Just to keep wool's front door. <coughs> oh. 
the old brain fog. And you really can feel it when it starts to come on, you know, just from lack of uh, calories, fat, salt, whatever, glucose. Water alone isn't enough when you're exercising. Well, it probably is actually, you could do, I don't know what I'm talking about. That's what I know. What I know is that I don't know. Sometimes them big meals are just a bit heavy. And they're normally upwards of 700 calories. This one is, I've taken a bit off that told me, but it's around the 300 mark, 300 and summit. So it's not going to blow you. It's not going to make me too full. It smells lovely. I can't be bothered to show you, but it's chicken soup. There's big bits of chicken, pepper, green shit. I'll report back with the flavour. Oh wow. That's very good. That's one of the best ones I've had. Probably because I'm starving. Living like a king. We've made it. Made it through a rough bit. A rough bit. <sighs> we get this down, mate. Re have a bit more water and then that'll be it for stops today we'll we'll just plod on to the big blue nice little rest spot that please come out there he is little robert he's gone in there where have you gone little matey robin just flew straight past me landed on the path in front of me and just dipped in there a glorious sight and a sign to dig deep. Imagine if that was my Robin that he just secretly followed me and then he knew that he just wanted to give me a little bit of a pep. Pep me up. That's what I'm gonna think. That's the narrative I'm gonna paint. And there's nothing anyone can do or say that can stop. Hey, look, you can see to monument, look. On top of there. So I've come down through these woods into the valley, then I'm up this other side and we're making our way up to the top of here. You can see, despite the um, hardened, rubberized handle that your man's put on, or your woman, over the years, people's hands have just gone here and you can see the beautiful coloration there. You maybe can't because of the light. Can you see it there? Some lovely coloration going into it. Um, and it really, oh, lets you know it's there. Classic. North Yorkshire Moors does it again. Look at the size of these slabs, man. Look at them. Absolute weapon. Imagine getting that. Imagine having to lay that. Respect. A few hundred meters down, there's the other half of it. I'm uh, stopping to smell the roses. Are you are you doing the Cleveland way? No, I don't really come round this way too often, so I'm just walking just, until just, I get sick. Just rambling. <laughs> All right, cool. Enjoy. Oh God, medic! <laughs> I don't know who's at. Is it just a sheer drop? Oh, that's giving me a card lap. Whee! Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough. Redka. No, yeah, Redka. Uh, where am I going? Square okay. Look at this. Glorious view. And the wind is cold. And that is such a joy. What 
way. So you see Rosebury Toppings head poking up over in the distance. I don't know whether it's tied into me uh, ADHD or whether it's just that I'm a, a goon or whatever, but I can't stand that. If I stand too close to an edge of something, I, my brain starts saying, throw yourself off. And not in like a somber, like, I've had enough of life, see you later. It's just like an intrusive thought that just says, what if, like I overthink, I'm like, what would happen if my body, if I just went wee? Like even just to tease myself, like got an wee. And then like my brain would throw me over edge just to sort of see what had happened. <laughs> so I get all them thoughts rushing through me and I'm like, oh, get away from edge, mate. Get away from edge, what brain sends you over? <laughs> As a, a joke that's gone too far. Look at all this fireweed. Beautiful actually. Beautiful colours on it. This is what happens when you don't have a lot of human interaction and you're a bit tired, isn't that? Um, some bloke came past, he was on a bike and he was coming past and I was like, ready to give it how do. Because that's what, that's one of my ones is, how do, how do you do? So, locked and loaded with how do, in back at Noodle, giving it ready for, <laughs> ready. <laughs> Ready for how do? Sorted. And then he hit me with a, his own how do. He went how do? I was like, Fuck, I forgot where I am. I mean, how do land the land of how do? Like normally, how do? You can go far afield on your hikes and you give it an how do, and they're like, hello, whatever. So I had how do locked in, and he hit me with his how do. Hadouken. <laughs> he got me with Hadouken first at a split second and I changed it to like as I was gonna say my how do how do I wanted then to say oh, all good because if he if he just said how do I'd be like all good mate or all good whatever and it just ended up coming out what was it it was how how good I just it was like sounded like a baby it was like how do and I went how do and uh, <laughs> how how do and I just went how it was a mixture between how and all, it's like how goo, how goo <laughs> is what I said to him. How do, mate? How goo? He's just thinking, who the, what is that lollipop lady, lollipop lad? That lollipop lad's been on mushies or something. How goo, my lady? <sighs> Not much else to report. At the end of the day, yesterday I was. I was so out of my head, I couldn't string a thought together, it was like a chaotic soup in my mind, just um, little mantras of like negative stuff or stuff that didn't make sense or you know, like oh it's so hot, just mad and then mad stuff just thinking crazy thoughts because my head was boiled. <laughs> but today with it being cooler, I've eased into it a little bit more and I'm very much more lucid. I know I've just told that guy Hagu or whatever, Hagukan, but I feel a lot more lucid. My thoughts are more my own. And it's meditative, man. It's a journey. And I'm enjoying the journey. Still doing it. I ain't got as much chat on the way back, but still doing it. The sky looks like it's gonna threaten in a little bit to, to rain. That would be an absolute joy. I think the whole, I know for the whole of Yorkshire at least, would be very, very appreciative of a bit of downpour for everyone's gardens and for the wildlife. Oh, this is a beautiful little spot, look. I was thinking it was going to go down into civilization, but it looks like we've got a lot more to go yet. Nice little bit of grass to camp on. Whoa, look at that. Not bad. There's a mist, sorry, there's a mist just on the horizon, so I don't want to call the sea yet 
because if it isn't, it's demoralising. If I'm like, oh, that's the sea, yeah, it's going, it just turns out to be a misty bunch of fields. It's not good for morale. Yesterday was probably the hard, I know I'm banging on about it, but it's probably the hardest day of hiking I've ever done. And that includes ever, <laughs> everything, if I think about it. Really tough, man, really tough. I thought, at one point I thought, I'm gonna have to get medicked off the side of this, like, I'm gonna have to get medicked out of here. Can you imagine that? The ultimate medic. Just close channel down, delete Instagram. Keep my, keep Facebook so I can keep in touch with uh, people I've never seen in real life from school. Uh, yeah, it would have been humiliating, wouldn't it? Airlifted, airlifted off with heat stroke. No water, just a little crispy, a oh, little pork scratching of a man with a lollipop lad hat on. Airlifted off in a big bag of, like just a big, they come down with a big empty, like an oversized empty bag of pork scratchings. And they just pick me up with one of them little crane grabbers you get down at arcades to win a toy. Just crispy little mint, pot mint bag, off he goes. Laughing stock. Goes up there, doesn't it? Let's have a check. Right, map check, because I'm not getting caught out here. That looks like, is it that one pointing up there? Or is it that one meaning straight forward? Got the old Harvey map out. I'm not, I'm not best pleased with Harvey maps for telling me there was a cafe there and there wasn't. But we're forgiving each other now. That path takes me down there. I don't want to go down there, so it is slightly right and then up round this wood and then we're into some sort of civilization medic i found the mother load of wild raspberries but it's in a how deep is that i just need to get a good base so that i can get tucked in to these rasbos yes we're in look at this <laughs> I've only had chicken soup all day, so. Oh my word. Right, I'm. I'm look at them all! I'm filling my boots. There, you can see all the little tracks. The trials bikes. And people have put rocks on all posts, so that one doesn't have one. What else do look? Hold on then, let's sort that out, shall we? There you go. So you don't feel left out, mate. Because all your other mates have got <laughs> stones on them. All of them. All of them, literally all of them. That's good. Whatever. Nine miles to, miles to Kildale, so two mile, three mile. I did about four, four or five before that, so I've done, let's say, 14 mile. 14 mile day, 14 miles so far. Medic! I was coming through them woods and I could smell proper fire. Not like a campfire, but like a proper fire. And I've got up to the top and that wood is on fire and you've got the uh, fire brigade trying to do a bit. Look there with us, loads of people behind him. Move over this way, there's a big fire engine there. If, uh, who's having fires at this time? Like when it's a heat wave, don't bother. In fact, don't bother. In summer, having a wildfire, you shouldn't really. Unless you're really, really careful and you really know what you're doing. Now that, now that there's more, you know, there's about 12 of you watching or whatever, I have to just be, I have to just keep it real, don't I? And I'll say, don't bother. Don't bother having fires in summer at all. Especially when there's a heat wave. And then it's summer to look forward to, because people are like, oh, can't you do your bushcrafting videos and stuff? I'm like, 
Not in summer, mate, because I've, I've, I sort of take summer off out of the woods because the fire just doesn't make sense. Unless I'm going out specifically to cook something, then it just doesn't make sense to have a fire because it's not cold enough. It's, it's You don't really need it. So it's only on a special occasions that I'll use a fire in summer. But just let, you know, then, then, then uh, autumn, you can look forward to autumn when it's when the when the fire's needed, when it's uh, going to provide you with light and warmth. How do you reckon it was caused? Well, it's been a deep seated fire for about three weeks. Oh, really? Yeah. Underground, and then it sprung yeah. up. Yeah, it's a lot of peaty ground, so it just burns and smoulders, and then we get a few days like this, and it just catches on and it's away. How could that have started at the beginning? Do you mind me no, doing well, this? That's not for us to say, that's, that's for other people to investigate. That, that's it? for someone else to investigate, because <laughs> that's hearsay, isn't it? They can't be fr their job's just we to put... Can't, we can't blame people. That's it. Their job's just to put the fire out. So, be, you know, just be cautious when you're having your fires or flicking your tabs and that. Yeah. Don't even bother this time of year when it's like this. Don't yeah. even bother, have a salad. Don't yeah. cook anything on it. Well, we've had two fires. We've been on two fires in two days. One was 10,000 square metres. Wow. This is about 20. 20 what wildlife and stuff that's just getting annihilated. Yeah. Right, there you go. You've heard it from Aussies. Well, you've heard it from me. He just here to put fires out, but... Yeah. Now, what's your name, mate? Neil. Neil, nice one, Neil. I'll get it Knuckles, Neil. Nice one, mate. Good lad. I'll right. for you. All right, yeah. Take it easy. Thank you. See you later. Yeah. There you go, look. Good old Neil. There. Shaquille O'Neal giving it... Um, so that's three weeks that's been burning underground, so that's that's summer, isn't it? You don't realise. So this let this just be a little no what let a little bit of a thing for you that if you're out in woods and you're having your fires and you you're squaring it away and you think you're doing okay. I mean look at all this smouldering down here as well. Um you know you think you've left no trace and everything's cool. But if you're new to it and you don't know, you might have just had that fire on some really peaty ground. You've set underneath the ground on fire, you've thought you've put your, your, what, the surface out and you've gone off on your merry way. And uh, that's kept on smouldering under the ground for three weeks until a bit of hot and dry weather has just made it erupt. And then you've got, you know, there's all that woodland on fire and it's all around here as well I can see it oh my word because once they once it goes it goes and you know your pine trees and your conifers it's all fat wood in it just once it goes it goes man so whew. yeah be mindful of it guys be mindful of it uh, and shout out man like Neil and the rest of them not chucking allegations, just getting on with it, putting fires out and doing the job. Respect. Murder. Don't know if you can see it on here, but there she is. You can smell it, man. The wind's coming in off the sea, carrying that sea air. I can see it, mate. Made it to the sea. Well, I can see this here. We've not made it to it, but still, little things in it, little things, little little things that put spring in my step. And seeing the sea has given me a little spring. I'm not going to do a spring because I could potentially break my ankle. I'm feeling pretty weak. Uh, speaking of feeling pretty weak, it's it's like half five or something, um, and I'm just I'm just rolling on like a soup and a slack handful of raspberries. So, I'm a bit weak, I feel a bit weaked, weakened and hungry. Ho hostels, B&Bs, things like that. I never rule them out if they, I never plan them in advance, but if it comes to it and I'm tired and I see one and it's reasonable, I'm in. It makes it more fun, adventurous. And if not, I'll get something to eat and then 
We'll keep walking a little bit, find some way to pitch the wigwam. Spot on, Mead. Oh, right foot feels it's like it's going to explode. Hey, up. Oh, there you go, look. Just more of it. Are you having that, Neil? I'm in a place called Skelton, about a mile and a half away from my destination. But they had a co op, so I was like, right, I'm gonna have to fill up here with some treats. Got some roasted chickpea and paprika hummus with some barbecue chicken slices and some watermelon and a bag of crisps. The idea is to dip the crisps and the chicken in the hummus, melon after, and that'll get me to the seaside. Medic! So I've got lost in this rabbit, rabbit warren of houses. Uh, got to where I wanted to be and it's closed off because they're building this new estate. So I asked a fellow and he said, come all the way around here. So apparently I've got to go down here. It says it's a dead end, but then he says there's a way you can get into it woods and uh, over top to, um, to Saltburn. So we'll see, but for anyone who's doing this, be aware that that's the script. Pleased to see you. Why right over it? It's pointless. Bit high up for a door, I need some ladders. Unless that's his window and that's the door, look. It's pretty sick, actually. Have you done that? Respect. Looks like a little dryad saddle. Late in the season, but yeah. Finally, 52 miles. Right, 52 miles in two days. To pull it back after the shocking start in the heat wave, I fell behind and I said to myself, don't matter, we'll do it in about an extra day. No pressure. I ain't trying to break any records or break myself. But if it's 52 miles from here, and I've got two days, and whatever I do today, right, Cleveland Way, why are you taking me up that hill? That just doesn't seem right. It doesn't seem right, geezer. All right, but I'll do it. I'm gonna go for it. Thing is, I could get here now and bat on, shave a few miles off, maybe do five miles tonight. Nice five miler, and then that's massively reduced the the, oh my time, I'm fucking just waffling about now, I know, sorry. Um, <laughs> I'll get to where I'm going first, I'll get to the sea and then we'll decide. Look at this mate, I've just got this, I've haggled them down, look at it. Look at this. I hope they've got a bar. Look at that. <laughs> I don't belong in here, do I? Alright, day three, we're up, we're uh, we're rejuvenated, we're, we're back on the game, we're looking for water, we hike. <laughs> I see some decent birds and wildlife and this is, the um, times are good. We hit this road, we're coming to Kildale is it? Yeah, Kildale. And look on here, cafe look. Sort it out, they want a cafe, there's nothing here for anyone who's coming down. There's a toilets, but the dirt, it's it's difficult to get your water filled up and stuff. So maybe you could have, you can use the bathroom or whatever, but there isn't these amenities like it says on here. So just be aware of that if you're going to use the Harvey map. The climb out was pretty brutal, but I was in good spirits. <clears throat> up here onto the top of the moorland. And to the Captain Cook Monument. Which was cool to see that after it being such a little dot in my mind, in my in my noggin bollocks from the day before. Cruise down here. This is where I stopped for something to eat. Just here, um, over the car park. Came up here, saw me robbing around here. I think that sorted me out. And this is where you can either go from here. You can either go to the top of the Rosebery Topping, have a quick look. I didn't bother with that. I just cracked on and away. 
And now, I can't quite remember in my head where, what this all was. There's some nice woodland bits through Gisborough Woods, and then, oh no, that, yeah, through the, um, through the biking bit, the motorbike section. I got lost. Is it, is it here? Yeah, I did. I come down here, and then I got lost. Got a bit lost, ended up going down this road, and then double back. I was like, all right, okie dokie. Came through here. Skelton is where I got some grub and then but I batted on kept going energized off my grub nothing's gonna stop me here I go I kept going and then bosh there I am Saltburn in some digs is where I stayed in some digs I'm in the digs recharge my batteries rest my legs and get ready for the coastal part that is the halfway point and get ready to take on the Yorkshire coast. Consider subscribing if you're not already. Click the bell notification if you want to be notified when the next video is out. And look after yourselves. Take care. Thanks for watching. See you soon.